Peter, I suppose it's fairly true to say that you're kind of a newcomer to the festival scene, am I well, right? Yes, when I compare the length of time that I've been coming to the length of time that these festivals have been organised, it's a very short time indeed. My first festival was at Barton Hall in 2001. And I came to the second one last year, and this is my third, and I shall still carry on coming. I was going to say, you seem as though you're hooked. Oh, yes, definitely. What about your interest in the organs? I mean, although you've only been coming to festivals for a comparatively short time, have you had a longer interest in the electronic organs? Yes. Um, when I went to college, because I became a, a teacher, I had to do a thesis. And a local dance band in the village where I used to live in Cornwall had a clavier line which was this little three-octave monophonic keyboard with all these little instrument switches on the front of it. And I was interested in electronics in those days. And I decided that, well, I'd like to have something like that. And then a magazine of the time, the old practical wireless, had a design. So I got all the bits together and started building it. And when I went to college, I used it as my thesis in the electronic production of music physics in the electronic production of music and I've been hooked ever since and that was a little four three octave monophonic keyboard which I've still got using old things called valves or what the Americans would call tubes and it was probably another oh, nearly ten years before I did anything in the organ world and that was um, a retailer in Truro had a whole series of new Hammonds in, I think it was the M series, and they were offering courses of 10 weeks, I forget how much the cost was, but it was minimal in those days. So I did a 10 week course on the Hammond, and I was really hooked. Then after that, I had the opportunity to buy a Lowry, which was expensive, even though it was second hand, and this was late 60s, which I had for many years, and that had 48 valves in it, and I could do some repairs on that when that went wrong until I got to the stage where I couldn't repair it any longer and I had to go with it the set of creative organist books and I used to get halfway through book three and give up every time I did that for years and years and years and then um, my interest was rekindled oh, about seven years ago when I had the opportunity to buy a much better organ still an American and a con organ when my wife saw it, she said, what a monstrosity. However, it was a beautiful instrument and with a true Leslie speaker, and I was quite pleased with that instrument. But then I started having lessons on a Yamaha with all these beautiful orchestral effects, which I hadn't come across before on a personal basis. So I was then looking around for another type of organ with these orchestral effects. And I went to a music shop in Bristol with a certain budget figure in mind and then I looked at other things above my budget and I went above my budget and I bought a, a Techniques GA3 with all these lovely orchestral effects and this was just prior actually to the first festival that I attended in 2001 and the uh, organ duly arrived then the next festival, a year later, the same firm was there with the upgrade from the GA3 to the G100. And I fell for that one. And that's my present organ. And very often I'm playing at one or two o'clock in the morning. He's just returned from a very successful tours of Turkey and Sweden. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you please put your hands together for Mr. Andrew Nix. Torquay and Swindon.
course, at the end of every one of the, the night's concerts, there's always something for the dancers amongst them. That's right. I provide for dancing because very often one of the partners come along because they're interested, but the, the other part is not. So we provide uh, dancing uh, and also uh, other quizzes and things like that so that uh, the partner is also involved in the activity. And are the dancing uh, sessions led by professional people? Yes, uh, at this particular event we've got uh, Elaine and uh, Ted Kirby and uh, they are known as international dancing leaders. They got, they got more letters after their name than, than, than letters in the alphabet, I think. Uh, they're very, very qualified and uh, they come along and they uh, go on the fl floor first of all and uh, everybody else follow. Yes, they, they're very good actually. Ted and Elaine Kirby, yeah. Please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen.
Now, my recollection of organ concerts years ago was going to demonstrations in hotels where the salesman got you up onto the stage and made you play Spanish Eyes in about five minutes flat. But it's come on a long way since then, and to tell us a little bit about it, here's Alan. Oh, hello, Alan. This is a brand new instrument designed from Casio Electronics, one of the largest international companies which is into school education, always been into school education instruments and everything else. And this is where it helps people who come on these holidays. The, pe the person who's never played before can now play instantly within a few minutes. Instead of just your Spanish eyes, they're encouraged to play by a light system. And we designed a keyboard like this, which is a, a standard 61 note keyboard which can be used for all types of playing, for the man who can play, the lady who can play, but for the other part,